There are many high-tech things coming one after another, and not just from one company, but many companies are working super hard to sell the best product to their customers. It's a whole new world, as now bit-by-bit -bit electric vehicles are coming and becoming the center of the automobile industry and making conventionally powered vehicles obsolete. And soon, those cars will be an old story. Believe it or not, we've entered the new age of vehicles, especially cars, and with that, new and technologically advanced cars, which are running on the streets. And you might be able to purchase one and see how it works, but it can be confusing for you to choose between plug-in hybrid cars, hybrid cars, and electric cars. But we, we're here to help you guys and get you out of your problems, as we're going to give you a detailed analysis. Today's video is a comparison between plug-in hybrid versus hybrid versus electric cars. So before we move forward and start this journey, we would like you to share this video and subscribe to the channel. Oh yeah, and then like it too. You know, so we can bring some exciting things to you. So let's start. At the point when we say electric vehicles, we mean every single electric vehicle, or, or you can call it EVs for short. They're known as battery electric vehicles, BEV. And if you want to have a clear image of what an electric vehicle is, well, then it looks kind of like a Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Nissan Leaf, the Tesla Model 3, as these cars are probably the best examples out there today. Furthermore, these kinds of vehicles are the most famous nowadays, and in these vehicles there's no motor and there's no fuel tank. They utilize zero gas and they got no tailpipe. They also have huge electric engines and since, well, they're the thing that drive it all forward. Furthermore, their batteries are, I'll say it again, huge. Huge means it needs a lot of space. It occupies a layer under the whole floor of the vehicle. Their capacity limit goes from 32 kilowatt hours to more than 100 kilowatt hours. Well, that depends from model to model and also the amount that you're spending. The most proficient EVs are appraised to use around 25 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, while heavier and sportier models are in the mid to high 40 kilowatt hour per every 100 mile range. Electric vehicles come with a ton of pros. To speak of a few, it's got smooth, quick, and calm speed increases. And minimal ordinary upkeep is separated from tires and wipers. And hey, the cost per, you know, gas is, is really cheap, cause he ain't got no need. It's just, you know, uh, electricity isn't always free. But yeah, so unless there's, you run out of charge, there's no need to stop. But it's not all fun and games. EVs do bring a slight maintenance issues with them. Namely, it requires time to recharge. Power outlets of 240 volts are needed, which is a much higher energy requirement than your run-of-the-mill sockets. Overseeing the charge is hard for tenants to see. In, in addition, long routes require frequent charging stations, which are kind of hard to find in today's day and age. The overall cost to purchase an EV is higher than normal gas vehicles. Bottom line, EVs are a better option for individuals who have access to the necessary infrastructure needed to house and charge such vehicles. It's a, it's a marvelous add-on, but we do recommend you got at least one other vehicle that's not electric, just to be on the safe side, you know? Now comes the time for the oldest among the three. Hybrid cars have been around for the longest. They go by the name of Hybrid Electric Vehicles, or HEVs for short. Essentially, a true hybrid is 100% gasoline fueled. Their window stickers have normal MPG on them, and indeed, in some cases, they're driven by power. However, on different occasions, they're driven by fuel. Also, in many cases, it's both. So they can have a gas motor and an electric engine and a sharp transmission that can join the two and a battery. The first hybrid car that was vastly manufactured was the Toyota Prius, and it was made available to the public in 1997. The fundamental innovation hasn't changed much since the first Prius showed up, but some things have changed when it comes to the effectiveness and implementation. The onboard battery that drives the hybrid's vehicle's electric engine is generally pretty teeny, which implies the battery in a hybrid can undoubtedly be energized, progressing either by the motor or power produced when the vehicle is drifting or slowing down. Certain individuals allude to these vehicles as self-charging cross-hybrids. To better understand what hybrid cars are, you can take a look at the Honda Accord Hybrid or the Lexus RX 450h alongside the Toyota Prius. Hybrid cars are a step up from EVs. Namely, they are a quick and simple fill up at any corner store. Hybrid cars are the most reasonable kind of charged vehicles out there. Besides, there, there's no compelling reason to contemplate connecting. 
A huge win in the pro column is that the hybrid cars can be your main vehicle. But we would be remiss to mention the cons of buying such a vehicle. When it comes down to it, hybrid cars don't offer as much gas savings as the half and half model would. The gas motor will in general be quiet and you know, require power. Hybrid cars or HEVs are best for individuals who live in lofts or some who need high gas mileage and a low carbon footprint, yet don't have steady access to a charger or don't need the problem. The components of a plug-in hybrid or a PHEV are the same as a hybrid vehicles. The primary contrast is that the battery is a lot greater in the PHEV, letting it drive further on electric power alone. The battery size implies that it can't be re-energized by the vehicle as it drives along like a hybrid. Though all things considered, very much like a completely electric vehicle, you need to connect the PHEV to re-energize the battery. On a full charge, a PHEV will normally permit you to drive somewhere in the range of 20 to 50 miles on its battery alone. When the battery's empty, then you gotta switch over to petroleum or diesel motor to proceed with your excursion. You won't get any huge assistance from the battery and, you know, electric engine until you've got the opportunity to connect for a considerable length of time to re-energize. However, a PHEV will joyfully drive down the entire day on its petrol or diesel motor. To have a better grasp of what a PHEV is, you can look at some of the top models which are the BMW 530e, the Toyota Prius Prime, and the Chrysler Pacifica Hybrid. PHEV offers a wide variety of pros, the biggest one being that it can work as an EV during an ordinary workday drive. Additionally, it doesn't require electric power, so don't fret, it'll continue moving for a quite a long time. The fuel motor is considered for long distance travel. PHEV can act as your main vehicle, see? The expense of maintaining one is balanced by the government and state charge impetuses. Now to speak of the cons. A PHEV is much costlier than an HEV. The electric driving reach is insufficient to completely keep away from the gas. A PHEV needs to consistently be connected to make it a legit option, so it won't require 240 volt plus to charge. And lastly, the space. Space taken by a PHEV may overshadow its usefulness. They're best for individuals who are, you know, are property holders with just one vehicle with steady access to a charger at home or work in any case. Not 240 volts. They need an EV in any case. And, and don't have any desire to be restricted by range concerns. And well, there you have it, folks. From this, you can decide which car you should go for. Just having fun. We told you separately about each one and even gave you the pros and cons of each one, from which you can easily see the vehicle that works best for you. On one hand, we have EVs, which are 100% electric, yet at the other we got HEVs that reuse regularly squandered energy to lessen their utilization of gas every now and again. At last, we have PHEVs, which go about as EVs in and out of town, but can utilize gas for longer outings. Among these three, there's an electric vehicle for everybody. And this is where we say our goodbyes. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and share and subscribe and all that goody goody nonsense. And mention your favorite one in the comment section below. Thank you, and I bid you adieu.